that's the spot. Oh, hey, sorry, not back scratchers. What these are are sanding sticks. I learned uh, this little trick from Evil Ted over at the Evil Ted channel on YouTube. He also has a website at Evil Ted. I Google it, you can find it. And once I saw the idea of these sanding sticks, I made them and thought, ah, eh, these might be something that I use from time to time but they have become a valuable part of my cosplay toolbox and I think they will be for you as well. So in this video, we're gonna go over how to make these. They're easy to make, they're cheap, and they will really give you a whole lot of new options when you are shaping your phone. So let's get started. Today we're gonna to look at a quick tip on how to make sanding sticks. This is not my original idea. I picked this up from Evil Ted Smith over at the Evil Ted channel. He's got a big channel on YouTube. I suggest you go check him out. He's got a lot of cool stuff. Seems like a really cool guy. And uh, he really knows his stuff. And this is one of the ideas that he shared that I'm also going to share with you. I uh, just wanted to give credit where credit is due. This is not my idea. But these have come in really handy. I never thought of this before I saw his videos. And I really, really like them. So I thought I'd share them with you so you could also use these sort of things with your next build. Basically what they are is just a straight edge. Pretend you have a small sanding block in your hand at all times that you can use like this. That's what this does, except you just hold it this way. So um, when I have, what I have here are two pretty much identical pieces of foam I've cut with a small angle on the edge here. I'm gonna leave one and I'm gonna sand one because let's say you wanted this edge to be rounded. I wanna show you what this could be used for. I'm going to start with a 120 grit just because I can. Now you can go up to a higher grit. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing too much. You start getting into like 60 and 80 and every stroke is basically just going to rip the foam. You don't want to do that. You want to use, um, I wouldn't go too far down the line. Um, I wouldn't go any stronger than that for your first pass. But you can also go down to uh, much higher grits as well. You can go into the thousands if you want. I'm going to turn this just so we can see the edge of the table to show how I like to use them. What I really like to do is hold it on the edge of the table and that way you can always get a consistent angle on what you're doing here. Now that I've knocked that down a little bit, I'm going to go over with a, a thinner, a lighter grit of sandpaper kind of smooth it out. Should be good. Now what you can see here, as soon as I find the camera angle, is that I've really dulled that angle down. If you look at it, you can really see a nice curve on that. And that was just with a few passes of that sanding stick, which I think looks much better than this hard curve here. So that's what you can use sanding sticks for. You can really add a lot of extra shape and dimension and uh, clean up your beveled lines and things like that with these. Even when you make a cut, you can go along the cut and really make that cut a little sharper. Just to really take out any kind of irregularities or anything you might have done during the cutting process. So that's what you can do with it. So we're just going to go ahead and throw some rubber cement on here. I don't really recommend barge rubber cement for this because barge is uh, it's a little pricey. And if you're going to uh, use glue just for something as simple as this, I would use hot glue or the spray glue, which I just ran out of. You could probably use wood glue. Never tried it myself, but I'm sure you could. So we're going to go ahead and put a layer of that on. And we've got some sandpaper. This is 150 grit. Before we go too far, I'm going to mark these sticks with what they're going to be. One, five, zero. That way I don't get confused and wonder what grit that was later. do is add some glue on this and then we're going to stick it on but since I'm going to use barge I want barge on both 
um, both edges that are going to stick. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where this is going to be so I don't waste a whole lot of my sandpaper. I don't really think I need that anymore. Sorry for putting my big head in your way. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. I'm going to add a little bars to this. Usually with barge I like to use two layers, at least on foam. And that's because the first layer usually gets pretty well absorbed into the foam. But since we're using wood and paper, we're going to go ahead and uh, just use one layer. That should be adequate for what we're doing here. Now, I usually use gloves, but only using a little tiny bit of glue on a couple surfaces. I don't see it getting messy, so I'm not going to worry about it at this point. Of course, I have my garage door open, hence all the noise, but that's because barge gives off a pretty foul odor with a lot of chemicals in it that could probably make you sick. Um, so, unless you want to wear a respirator, I recommend having some good airflow in the workspace that you're working in when you're making these. If I had a hair dryer, I'd use it, but I don't, so I have my heat gun just to speed up the drying process. I'm just going to turn it on low. I'm not going to hold it in place for very long, uh, because if you do, you'll pretty much ruin the glue. So we're just going to lightly go across it and help it dry to speed up the process. You can tell when, when barge is starting to dry, you might not be able to see it in here. But it's less glossy on this one because I've dried it a little bit. If I try to get the sheen with the light here, you see this one here, sorry this one, has a lot more shine to it because it's not quite as dry. So this one is good, good to go. That should be dry enough just for the purpose of sticking these all together. Now once this is, the glue is on here and it's uh, pretty much dry, once you touch one surface to another, it's almost an instant contact. So you have to be very um, intentional in what you're doing because it's really hard to stick this on the wrong angle and peel it back off to start again. So we're just going to be a little more careful. Start at the top and then press it down. Do the same with this one. Press that on there good. Because contact is part of the name of contact cement. You can't just barely set it on there. You really have to press it on good. That contact is part of the gluing process. So now we've got that done. We're just going to cut along the side of this. And the side of this one. And there we go. We have two 150 grit sanding sticks. While you're making your sanding sticks, there's one more thing I'd like to point out. If you have popsicle sticks, it's good to go ahead and make a couple of those too. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty small in comparison, but when you have a curve, um, let's say this is cut in a funny angle, and you just need to get down that little tiny curve, you can use this to really get down there and sand things out. I wrap mine around when I actually make it on the sticks because they're so small. That way I can even use the very pointy edge to get down into cracks as well. And as you can see, it was already making some progress just doing that gently. So you can use these along with your stir sticks, I'm sorry, your sanding sticks, which were stir sticks, to really add some uh, different effects and looks to your armor. Hey there, you, yeah you, come here. Why don't you uh, click that subscribe button real quick, please? That's all I got for you. Just come by and see me at cccosplay.com, hit that subscribe button, that way you'll always have updated information when new videos are released. And uh, connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All the information is on cccosplay.com. And last but not least, stay crafty my friends.